All right, there we go. Looks like we're starting with Urban with 20,000 or 29,000 Facebook employees. Yeah, there was a hard drive out and about and it was unencrypted as usual at payroll information and it was snatched away. Mm -hmm. uh, the, when this original article came out, there wasn't the update of confirmation from Facebook, but now it's there. Uh, but yeah, just a quick That's reminder. That's pretty amazing. Of, so what, right? what, 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 what were these on the hard drives for? Backups? That's my guess, is it's backups. But why yeah. would you do that unencrypted? Especially with that sensitive information, you're just and you just stuck it somewhere that it could be uh, smashed and grabbed? Come on. Yeah. Kind of a rookie mistake. A very yeah. old problem, yeah. And I'll bet this is happening a lot more frequently than we hear about. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I bet a bunch of people just don't know it was stolen or they choose not to mention it. I wonder how big the fine is if you fail to report a thing like that. I don't I think would, there is. Oh, there are data breach requirements in some states anyway. Really? Go ahead. They seem, they seem more like suggestions than, uh, you know, actual regulations with penalties for noncompliance. Yes, I think so. I, and besides, how would anybody ever find out? Well, anyway, this Unless they're like, hey, look, I have. Yep, somebody could do that. And this is, um, so I, this is interesting, getting a lot of attention um, because it's talking about how you can't get rid of crime and you have to accept a certain amount of crime. And they're talking about techniques to try to make better criminals. And it is uh, claimed here that careful enforcement activities result in better criminals like the Somali pirates apparently are careful not to reattack ships that have already paid them off. And they say um, kidnap scenarios have a 97.5% chance of successful resolution, much more than most other things. And if the uh, economy has honest kidnappers, then it's better for everybody. So it's an interesting issue. And um, I sort of like it for the game theory point where you cannot, rather than pretending you can get rid of crime, you start planning how to encourage crime that is less harmful um, and what an acceptable level of crime is and such. This seems kind of realistic. Uh, anyway. So you're, you're, yeah, you're accepting that that crime's not going to go anywhere. So how do we encourage people to do the least amount of damage? Yeah, it seems to me just like uh, standard risk uh, management. You, you know the risk will never be zero, so you try to arrange situations that make the risk acceptable. Anyway, it's kind of a cute idea. And logic bombs from Siemens. Yeah, uh, I thought this was I thought this was pretty interesting. Um, the, this guy actually got uh, prosecuted, jailed, and fined for this. But uh, it was it was a former um, it was a former uh, contractor. And you wonder if this was on a government job because I know that Siemens does a lot of government work. Um, but they found that this guy had essentially set up uh, conditions in a software um, that would cause the uh, it would cause. Um, bad things to happen once uh once certain conditions were met uh and you know a lot of this is i've heard of this happening before employees will do it uh it's almost sort of like a, like a dead man switch or something if they get fired or laid off then uh then these things happen after they're gone and a lot of the time the um company can't trace where the problem came from to begin with but they found this guy yeah yeah, I know many years ago, they caught a guy on BART slashing the seats, and it turned out to be the guy who paid to repair the seats. It's the same kind of <laughs> And there's a perennial, uh, huh. a perennial, security. perennial theory is out there that the virus has actually come from the antivirus companies, which I don't think anybody has ever found any I've evidence I've heard for. that. Yeah. You, yeah anyway. Well, I mean, it's jobs. 
you know, if you keep causing the if you keep causing the problem, then uh, it's easier to fix it. Uh, mechanics, so there are mechanics that have pulled this kind of thing before too. Um, you know, they'll take a part out and then put it back in later. So if yeah. they can flunk students to make them take a course over, <laughs> accomplish the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> We could also just teach rotten stuff so they'll get fired from their job and come back to school. Yeah. So uh, here's a retailer with a leak. Yeah, another leak. Light. Uh, massive box. database from a Chinese company. Mm -hmm. Based in Beijing. We got about a terabyte of daily logs that were out out and about. This was covered not too long ago. Yep. And it also yeah. contains from uh, stuff from their other, like their um, subsidiaries. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it's Very pretty detailed info. Yep, and was it just left on an open Amazon pocket or what? That's kind of what it seems like. That's usually what it is, although... Yeah, China, elastic search data. Oh, just Elasticsearch. That's probably their own server then. Yeah. Yeah, that's uh, that's why I finally switched to a password manager because uh, I know people keep losing the data at the other end. And so this one got my attention because I thought the whole point of ransomware was it's not a breach and you don't have to report it as a breach because they just encrypt the data in place. But now they are dumping the data if you don't pay the ransom. And that means they've been stealing it or they could have been stealing it all along. And I think that means you have to call it a breach. So it's, uh, it's a big change in, I think, how you have to handle ransomware attacks. If this is going to become a known thing that they do. And I don't know, look, I'm thinking the IR team would be able to tell you whether they stole the data or just encrypted it in place. That's why I'm, I'm sort of confused at mixing these two very different attacks as if they're almost the same. But anyway, uh, I'd like to know more about what happened here. I wonder if, uh, like, one something like WannaCry, looking at its its code to see is it is it doing more than just phoning home and getting a, a few other ransomwares and seeing maybe maybe one of them have something some line where they're extracting data yeah i haven't read the code i wrote a ransomware that does what those do it's just encryption in place but doesn't uh, send it anywhere and i thought that's the way most of them worked um i guess you could easily add a backdoor to make it possible to steal the files i just hired an https so nobody knows if i was doesn't know what's happening well they'd know if you stole any large amount of it yeah and most companies man in the middle of the HTTPS anyway, so they would really know. They'd know if they were looking. I mean, I think some of the times they hit companies that uh, aren't even doing very good monitoring on their uh, traffic or, you know, I, I was thinking about the thought occurred to me, um, the way, how unorganized some businesses are. Uh, they could not even, it's possible that a business could even be unaware that they'd been hit. Uh, just due to, you know, sheer layers of incompetence and multiple fails throughout the chain. Well, I don't think you can be unaware of ransomware. Your files are encrypted and there's a ransom note sitting there instead. That's not subtle. That's true. That's true. But I think they usually are unaware that they've had data breach and data theft. Yeah. Anyway, this is another uh, conflict of interest issue again. Yeah, this was just, uh, this was, was definitely more of an uh, operational security story. Uh, this guy had none. Um, essentially, he was stealing cash deposits that were um, meant to go to the vault in uh, the local branch of the bank. And there are several amazing things about this story. I read, I was reading the uh, court documents from his indictment. And one of them was that, so he started at Wells Fargo in April. And in the uh, court documents, it says that he started stealing cash like right after he got hired. Uh, but 
um, they only list documents, uh, they only list transactions from June and July, which means this guy probably stole a whole lot of money before they even caught him, which is kind of amazing. You'd think that they'd have uh, tighter controls on hard currency <laughs> in the bank um, so that they'd notice it right away, but apparently not. Uh, the transaction list was long. And I mean, some of these transactions were not chump change. Um, I saw one that was like over 10 grand. Uh, and he got caught eventually because he um, was putting uh, pictures of himself holding wads of cash on Instagram, and then he made, uh, which he then put on YouTube <laughs> with all these piles of Uh oh, Elizabeth froze up here. Yeah. I thought it might be my connection, but I think it's hers. Yeah, I heard her degrade the thing degrade. Yeah. Yeah, well, I guess she'll be back. Anyway, this um, there was another case like that I saw a few years ago where a guy was actually going into a bank to put in his thumb drive to infect the machines with the keylogger, and he was videotaping him doing it all, putting it on YouTube or on Facebook. It's always, it's always the stupid way that they get caught. Well, yeah, I mean, and you might think that criminals are all stupid, or it might be just that the ones who get caught are stupid. Yeah. Well, I mean, putting pictures of yourself on social media of, hey, look at the cash, instead of being quiet about it. Yeah. I think a lot of people had the illusion that nobody else is looking at their social media. Just their friends. Oh, yeah. Facebook certainly wants you to feel that way. Anyway, I guess we can go ahead. We'll see if Elizabeth makes it back. Um, perhaps I should pause. Might be more. I'll pause the recording. All okay. right. We may be back on the road here. And we were up to Irvin Lemus's last one, Breaking App. Oh, yeah, I remember this one. Very fun. I don't think you're sharing your screen. Oh, yeah. all right. Let me fix that. Um, more. Share screen. What is this nonsense? Okay. <laughs> there. Good. Thank you. Good. There you go. Yeah. So, so this was. Yeah. The, so, uh, yeah. There is a lab in the making for us on how to break WhatsApp. Yeah. And decrypting messages. Now, I thought I saw this. Was great. You somehow get yeah. the secret key and you put it in a burp extension and it decrypts WhatsApp. That sounds awesome. Yup. And I don't know if the, it's the Burp Suite Pro or the community. Yeah, I don't that know. It sounds like you can just write a Python script and plug it in somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. If so, that, that would be great. That and looks like a really good write-up. I like it when they're real specific like that. Oh, yeah. And he, his particular thing is, of course, that there. if you send a bad character, then it crashes WhatsApp, and people have to uninstall it and leave their groups and stuff. But they patched that, so that's over. But even before that, just this part where you decrypt WhatsApp is the part that's interesting to me. Me too. Me too. Yeah. I, I, and yeah, to Lisa's point, I like that it is clear in, uh, how to do this. Yeah. Sounds like fun. Well, I was amazed to read about this. I didn't know you could do this. You could donate blood twice a week, which is legal in America, although there are serious concerns that this might be bad for your health. And an enormous number of people do this, and we're the only nation that allows you to sell it, and they sell it internationally. I read that. I was shocked by it. I was shocked by that, too, when I read it. Um, yeah. Two percent of our export so is not blood. Seen, hmm. Yes. Unless, unless they're just crazy and this is a lie. I mean, I, it, it's hard to believe, I'd say. But anyway. I, I, I believe it. Um, I believe it even though it's unbelievable. Um, yeah. Yeah, actually. You know, the organ, organ trade has become a, a fairly significant uh, 
economic market, which is kind of nuts to me. We don't sell organs for money for America. Uh, it's we? blood and tissue. Uh, and well, I mean, not officially. Okay, right. <laughs> yeah, and I know in China, there are persistent rumors that they just kill convicts to take their organs. But I don't know about yeah. America. Anyway, I was pretty surprised by that. We may be hearing oh. more about that. And the last one is Elizabeth, the ring pod, ring hacks. Yeah, I saw some things about this. Yeah, uh, well, it's kind of crazy because, I mean, we've known for a while that the ring cameras were, um, were uh, insecure. But it, what's crazy is that the podcasts of this where they essentially call people through their um, – their cameras and then broadcast the results to their uh, subscribers yeah. so it was kind of crazy they had a whole messaging forum and a discord set up for this and uh just for harassing people through their uh their uh cameras and i mean this wasn't they didn't even use any kind of fancy uh you know, technical bug, it was just credential stuffing because people had reused creds that had already been leaked from other services. So of course. Uh, pretty interesting. Well, of you course. know, people ought to start using how I've been pwned. More people are starting to do it. You don't have to let people reuse compromised credentials anymore. But people right. uh, to, you know, improve their game. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of the, a lot of the times people do it out of uh, laziness because there's just no uh, there's just no other better alternative to keeping track of a million different passwords. Yeah, that's why password managers exist. They do. Yep. Everybody should be using them. All right. Yeah. Just like a just like a keychain. Yeah, I've gotten yeah. used to it. Yeah, probably yeah. the most important advice to give people is to use a password manager, I think. Yeah. Uh -huh. All right. Well, I guess I'll stop this unless there are any more comments. No, no. no. I'll stop the recording if I can get the right button to click.